all right fam so welcome back to the rains african experiences i hope you had a lovely weekend and i hope uh your week is going perfectly fine uh for starters we remember the poll that we took when we asked or when i asked you if you wanted us to finish the house the single room house you know that one room or you wanted us to proceed to the double room or you wanted to know the wholesale prices of tiles and then i told you i went further to tell you that all these things are going to be worked upon as soon as possible so due to a little bit of higher demand let me first cover the two room house that is the living room and the bedroom self-contained with a stove i'll be explaining a few tricks i've come to learn within this week i've been a bit quiet i was doing extreme research because when i come to you to give you information i want to give you information that is very current that is very applicable to your needs okay so the information that i'm giving you today is basically how much money do you need to build this sing this single bedroom house by single bedroom i mean a double house or I also mean um, a living room and a bedroom, that kind of situation. These houses are commonly built pretty much anywhere. They are not too limited like the one-roomed houses, all right? With these new plans that people are building with right now, we actually see a more increase in people building up uh, double-roomed houses. They build them for both business, they can build them for rent for, uh, as rentals, and commercially i'll be mentioning if you're building it commercially you really i'll tell you what you don't have to do all right to to give yourself higher chances <laughs> of uh, more i don't know would i call it more people or something but basically if you're building a, a double room for uh, for business uh, usually most people use the front to sell their businesses and the back to sleep in them, right? But then there are people who actually want to do bigger shops and then they want to use the whole space. So if you've already built your wall to separate the front and the back, it puts you at a disadvantage. But if you haven't put the wall in between, the person who is renting can always come and put cardboard. Eh? The, the, the people who design can do it so nicely. It actually looks like a wall. And this person can walk at the front and still sleep at the back without you being inconvenienced someone tearing your house down so it's up to you and what you actually want and also it's very important to look at the houses in your location what are the business houses looking like before you, before you actually build one okay so you have to take a point with those but the, the prices i'll be giving you will be for one that actually has a wall separating it because my whole aim is to build a house so it's up to you to use this information any way you can as best as you can i also have new tricks for you from research it's gonna be a, a nice it's going to be a nice segment i promise you're going to learn so much you're going to benefit you are going to enjoy this segment all right uh the other thing that i wanted to talk about it's very off topic this week because I go to so many different locations within Uganda and I happen to get different border guys everywhere I go. This is actually something I would advise you to do. If you do business like I do, you do business in different places, always try to have specific people who transport you. All right? So that if you know you're traveling to that location today, you give them a, a heads up and tell them, I'll be coming there. I hope you'll be there to transport me to other places, right? don't just reach and start picking strangers anyway so uh off the stage of one of the places i go to one of the guys was brutally murdered it's been messing with me we buried him on saturday it's been messing with me so badly i pose a question to you all right we are living in a world where people are not comfortable working hard they don't want to work hard for anything they have we have so many stories that's been making rounds in uganda about girls breastfeeding snakes and so on right all in the name of money we do men and women both do too much to get quick quick money 
th there is nothing wrong with getting quick money but if you're going to get that quick money by ending a life of somebody else it's not right it's not right at the end of the day these things have a way of coming back to you i know you all say you have you pray and change but believe me the people you hurt are still casting you from wherever they are they are still turning heads and wishing you hadn't ended their son's life the, the, their their wife or husband's life the children are in this world wondering why would somebody kill my dad do you understand this guy had an eight months old baby when they told me i couldn't believe it he was brutally murdered it was insane i shouldn't even be talking about this but all i want you people to know is you have to try and be a little bit more careful out there really you just have to be a little bit more careful because people don't care like that people have no shame people have no self-respect people have nothing they stand for and at the end of the day not everyone of course but there are some people who are like that and at the end of the day they have no problem ending your life they don't you know they don't usually when someone says get out of my way please get out of their way when someone says leave me alone leave them alone because you don't know what this person is capable of. you don't know what this person is struggling with you don't know what they are going through and half the time they will take out that pain that whatever they are going through they will take it out on you okay I don't want anyone to fall victim to things like this all right just try to do your thing and leave people alone leave people alone because we are walking around with people have committed gruesome crimes because you people this has been on my head it's been weighing heavily you know taking a life is not easy it's not and this is something I would never wish on anybody. Nobody deserves to die like that, you know. Nobody. And these are these are the, the people who commit these crimes are the people we meet every day. People we don't know, we see them, and you don't know these people. So you have to be careful. I'm not asking you to be scared. I'm just asking you to be careful. All right. Interact with people, but have a degree to which you stop. All right. Have a limit to how much you give. Of yourself to people because people will use that that they know that they have and then take it out on you <laughs> anyway uh, I hope um, this never happens again really because these crimes crimes like these in a country like this they really never go solve most of them but it's just sad it's sad that we have to lose our loved ones to greed and people trying to make a quick buck because you're going to sell one million Ugandan shillings you're going to lose that in less than a week in less than a week and that's what it took for you to end a life what else are you capable of? do you understand what I'm talking about? these are the type of people we're rolling with anyway let's get into the video please I hope you enjoy the video thanks all right guys so welcome to the Rins african experiences our video today is focusing on the one bedroom one living room self-contained house now uh this entire place is under renovation so i figured i could use this place um and then i'll be showing you the room the dimensions of the house this particular house that we are talking about so now the width of the house is 4.30 meters and then the length of the house is 9.60 meters and then the height of the house that is of warmth okay now the height of the house is really dependent but for this particular house from the ground in the foundation it's about 10 feet all right but this video is going to focus on the cost <laughs> it's gonna focus on the cost of um, building it from foundation to uh, the beam the beam is what you call the our wall plate that the wall plate from which you actually roof all right so let me show you how this house is actually look inside and then I'll proceed from there. <laughs> 
and then I'll proceed from there to tell you a little bit of information so these houses when you're building a house like this you can decide to do the following things if you look at these dimensions they're actually very big like I said this entire place is under renovation so you see this space where there is a kitchen you see that space okay you can decide to actually put enclose this entire space and then put a door here just a minute I have no focus my focus is back sorry all right so you can decide to have this entire space enclosed Kati, what we locally call a store all right but this house is actually big enough to be your home once again if you have big land we're talking about 100 by 100 or upwards don't build this type of house in the middle of your land still find a corner in sonda or now any kind of corner and then build your house there all right so this place now the space we would have called a store these people call it a store stroke a kitchen and you can also do the same for yours or you can save on costs especially when it comes to the window because when it's a store <laughs> when it comes to a store you don't put a window that big but when it comes to uh when you put it in the house as a kitchen you need a window that big there so they what's up what's up how are you they're showing me the cut i'm working all right all right so this house is a single room or single bedroom and a living room Tasha, stop making noise. As you can see, there is a bedroom, and then a living room, a toilet, bathroom, and then kitchen. So these are the calculations I'm giving you to build something like this, all right? So in your bedroom, you can still have like a dimension of a closet. I don't know why this thing is zooming out like that. I need to figure it out or configure it. <laughs> the builders are coming probably in a week's time. I can't wait that long to make content. So I have to work as fast as I can. But if you look at the makings of this house, the money I'm going to tell you can actually build for you something like this. Watch it over, this is a complete house, all right? That you can have for you and your family. Or you can use it for business, or you can do anything you want eh? with, a house, with, a, with a house in a setting like this. But you're getting the point. So now I'm going to start explaining. The dimensions of this house are 4.30 meters wide and then 9.60 meters long. And then the height is 2.74 meters without the foundation. The foundation is always like two feet. Eh? So in these calculations that I'm giving you, I'm going to make the foundation two feet. I don't know if we are working together on this. Just bear with me and work together on this with me. All right? And I'll tell you how much it would cost you to roof this particular house. Because you see this place, it's actually big. Eh? It's a good house. It looks good. Everything is done. Now, at the end of the day, it's really up to what you want. Makings. We need bricks. Okay? If you're going to build, I'm going to give you three scenarios. I know someone asked me. Please address the issue of 99 blocks, those big blocks that we locally call 99. They can be, I'm going to start addressing those when we start building two bedrooms. Now, the whole reason you would build a single bedroom house is because you're trying to save on money. Every person building is trying to save on money, but there are some sizes of houses that you build. Clearly, you are trying to save money. And the point of you expanding into wasting more money, it makes no sense. So for me, I don't, I'm not going to make calculations for a 99 blocks to build a house like this. I'm going to make clay bricks and soil bricks. But if I'll make a poll, eh? 
if the demand is high for those that want to know how much it would cost them to build a house like this using 99 blocks then i'll make the video because you guys what you want is what i do this is a, the whole, that's the whole point of this platform to give you information that you can actually use that you need but for now i'm going to stick to soil bricks and clay bricks but when we reach the two bedrooms then i will proceed by explaining to you 99 blocks as well how many you need all right now let's go to material that you need normally because of the dimensions which are big the dimensions are big so you need between 7000 to 8000 bricks i would definitely take maximum and the maximum is 8000 because this house is big the dimensions you've seen it it's big all right so you need at least 8000 bricks to build it from foundation to wall plate or to the ring beam or whatever actually to to the wall plate because the beam is really not built it's concrete all right so to build this house from foundation to wall plate you need 8000 bricks to use the dimensions that i've given you if you need me to repeat those dimensions you can always ask all right now 8000 bricks due to public demand <laughs> i have a lot of people demanding me to increase the calculations and the prices of bricks but i'm going to still stand and tell you bricks range between 120 shillings to 200 shillings soil bricks i don't see why you should be paying 250 shillings for soil bricks if you are staying out of kampala even if you're staying in kampala make it a habit to find your own material all right so you need 8000 bricks and then uh each i've put the calculations of money today at 200 shillings remember if your dimensions are smaller you need lesser bricks because you can even build use the same dimensions we used for our single roomed house and you simply double it in that case you would need 7000 bricks if you're using those dimensions that we used but with these dimensions that i'm using right now to build this particular house as you see it right now you need 8000 bricks all right so at 200 shillings a soil brick multiplied by 8000 you're going to get about 1.6 and clay bricks i'm going to put them at 280 shillings yes i'm not going to put those bricks at 300 shillings because i know the price you can even get these same bricks at 250 shillings these clay bricks and i'm telling you the truth i just sold mine this same week i sold them at 260 and that's very very high okay so i know the most expensive you should be buying these bricks if you're not staying in the heart of kampala is 280 shillings <laughs> all right so cement to build this house from foundation to ring beam you, do you hear me including ring beam because the ring beam requires cement you have these floors to pour concrete in them you're going to pour a concrete from outside because you when you excavate again i call it space one so you're going to pour a concrete from here in the living room in the kitchen or you you'd call it the store to the bedroom to the you understand that's a lot so i'm going to calculate for you between 38 bags of cement to 40 bags of cement all right but i'm going to concur and say i'll just have money for 40 bags of cement to be on a safe side because the amount of concrete that's going to go in these two rooms is a lot and another thing you should prepare for is the soil because the soil you're going to excavate may not be enough you might need to buy some extra maram i already put uh, money accountability for that in case you don't want to, in, in case you don't want to to buy what you can do is you can level your compound and get off as, at least one inch of soil eh? it's enough and then you fill your house i've also accounted for that are we together and then you're going to need white 10 um white 10 steel bars Catch those white 10 steel bars eh? if your house is going to be a standalone like this one they are still buzzing this thing at least one steel bar is in there all right because 
you get it can be a round a round beam or it can be a, a boxed beam but it's really up to you because this is a standalone house you're not going to build it and leave it hanging like this this house will be in balance so now you start seeing cracks in your house as you can see there are no cracks in this house they have a water problem because you see those 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 things that are peeling i address them now when you're plastering put waterproof in your plaster all right these things are caused by water rising from the ground. So that's the kind of work we are going to do on this property. We are going to scrap off all this and redo the whole thing, especially from where the, the effects are. Because eh? if you even go in the house, you see the effects of water rising or damp, damp rising. All right, so it's very important that you mix waterproof in your what? In your plaster to avoid these problems because now the houses are painted but they are the damp is rising which leaves you at a very very big disadvantage because you have to now pay more money to do the whole thing again and the person has no choice all right okay so we proceed why why 10 so those 11 steel bars will help with the beam up they'll also help with that car beam eh? the car support beam those okalava yeah? this car one here because you're building a standalone house, so jacket agakano kaino kuba okano. O kuja konga to genda take our store. Yeah. If you're not going to put a store shake as a no tekali ko this kawan is not there. Oga kubeda mu camera fala. Mama jakuyomba. Alright, so Steel bars are currently white tens at 30,000 shillings, so you multiply that and you get 330,000 shillings. You need four elf trucks of lake sand. Lake sand, I always recommend railer, and the prices I'm giving you are for railer. Remember, I made a video on this. The other sand is slightly cheaper than railer. Why? Because when, when they are excavating railer, they actually get it from the bottom. Like for real, like they get it further than they get the rest of the sand. Some of this other sand even washes on the beaches by its own. And then people really just collect it. So they cannot charge you the same amount of money. Yeah, like the person who they, whom, for whom they are excavating sand for. And if you don't want to buy elf trucks, then you need two forward trucks. Hipped forward trucks. One of those, the words. So, if you're buying two forward trucks, make sure they are fully hipped. And make sure those forward trucks were flat inside. Because they are forward trucks that are not flat. I don't know, but just know they are trucks in their, in their base. They are not flat. They are a bit higher, like board vajikolanga eri waguluko kondala. So if you don't know how to calculate or understand those things, just get your four elf trucks, because elf trucks are all similar, as long as it's the standard size of an elf truck. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. You hurt yourself. And then I'm calculating Rayla at 200,000 shillings. Yes, an elf truck. All right? Is at 200,000 shillings. So if you need four of those, you're going to end up paying 800,000 shillings. And if you're going to buy a forward truck of railer that's hipped, the most you should be charged is 370,000 shillings. Forward for transport. All right. And then we have plaster sand. Plaster sand, you need about three elf trucks. All right. Three elf trucks. And then maybe what if you don't want to buy three elf trucks, then you buy one forward truck and one elf truck. You have a lot left, eh? but you can't do anything about that. Remember, plaster sand, it's okay for plaster sand to remain. In fact, if you even have money, you'd buy a box body of plaster sand. You know, you got your sand because plaster sand does a lot. They use it to plaster, they're using it to, to do the ceiling, they're using it for a lot of things. So if you can afford to buy a box, but they know you take a while, man, you plaster sand. Or what you want with them, and what's funny, you're going to spoil that thing, Natasha, stop it. Okay, are we following? A box body of plaster sand shouldn't cost you more than 550,000 shillings. The most is that, okay? 
the most is that and remember a box body of those trucks are built here they are not made they are built you usually find that there is a a forward head the truck has a, a head of a forward but the back is really built they're just built and they are really big all right so that that thing that box body could have at least three forward trucks in it so the most you should be paying for plaster sand with transport inclusive is 120,000 shillings per truck. I told you, I see people excavate, even me, one of the places where I'm making my bricks, we have sand. Do you know how much we are selling that sand, an, an elf truck of sand to the truck, guys? <laughs> And yet, the truck should be going for at least 50k if the, from, from the mine. Eh? But then the truck guys is going to come and say, Mbos, Manya, Andrina. You people, learn to know these things. Eh? The most you should be paying for plaster sand is 120k. I don't care where the person is coming to or from. An elf truck shouldn't cost you more than 120k. All right? Let's move on to other things. I don't want to make the video too long. Okay, eucalyptus. Now, eucalyptus, you need 18 of them. Why? This is a bigger structure. You need those same eucalyptus poles to sit the house. After sitting the house, you need to make ladders. Because when they build after a couple of courses, Bajakweta Gokuli Nyamadala, Bajakola Madala, in order to go up, are we following? Yeah? So, you're not, you're not going to expect them to get the pieces they cut to sit the house, to give it, to, to sit your small house plan. Madala, not necessarily Bajagwa. All right? And I don't think you're working hard for people to have injuries at your site. So you need 18 of those and you should be paying 5,000 5, shillings at most for one. But even at 4,000 shillings you can get. I give you prices but I always advise you learn, learn the power of negotiating and learn the power of research. First go to over six shops in your area, find out how much they are selling. Then buy from the cheapest, all right? Buy from the cheapest, and if you want to buy from the nearest person, then make sure you find a way of negotiating with them so that you can have a better deal, all right? You need pions or hope irons. Pions, eh? but there are those metals they put in the building as they build. Eh? Just one is enough. One is 23,000 shillings. So, one is enough. The, what remains, you can use it during roofing because when they are putting your, th your six by twos on your, on your beam, eh, they need to hoop them into the building. And have you ever seen that someone can build and leave them in the building? Nazi Zimba, Nazi, they come. And that, that would be best actually. Naem Nangoli, Wabata Zire Semo, they give you the work to actually do the whole thing yourself. The people roofing know what to do. All right? Okay, you need timber, Chirundu, Mbao. Timber is Mbao. Mbao, like Micah Dog House. Let me give you an example of Mbao. Do you see that? Orolubao, alright? So, Orolubao, I told you and I repeat, Chirundu is just a term. It's not a type of tree. Chirundu is a term to mean very strong wood. So for timber, you need 12 pieces for the start. Those 12 pieces, they'll use them. Remember, when they finish putting the beam up, because you see this thing here, this big thing, it's a, it's a beam. <laughs> now that's a beam. Kati, when they finish putting the beam, they're going to remove that timber and you can continue using it multipurposely. Even the ones you use, the, the eucalyptus you used for your ladders, so please protect your things. It looks like metal that's used or timber or wood that's already used, but trust me, it still has importance. So, just keep them. 
I'm going to assume there are new people watching and for the first time they are watching. So that's why I repeat some of these things. But I've already told you these things. So you need 12 of those and the most you should be paying. Chirundu or Chirundu. Any kind of timber is 9,000 shillings. Of course it depends on how many feet. But the standard feet, 9,000. But you can get at 8,000. Cheapest. If you're lucky enough to find someone willing to give you at 8,000 shillings, then you buy. Then you have binding wire, 8 kilograms are enough, a kilogram is 6,000. You need aggregate. Those bu sto small stones, eh? they're gold aggregate stones. You need at least two and a half trucks, but even two are enough. But for this size of house, you might need three. Because you put in the ground, then you go and put in your beam eh? as well. Now, remember, this cement that I gave you is enough to even pour for you that aggregate. Those 40 bugs can build for you, pour the beam for you, pour the aggregate stones for you. The 40 bugs. So I always advise when you're buying your material, buy in bits, buy 10 bugs. You buy another 10. But you can always leave the money at the hardware because you might buy 10 today and go back tomorrow. But if you've already paid in that same period of time, the person has no choice but to give you your what? Your material. So you need ring wire. I always recommend R6 for these small buildings. Each R6 is 4,000 shillings. So you multiply and get 24,000 shillings. Now put aside money for transport for your workers. Yes, just put 100,000 aside. That, that money is enough to either transport them or house them. But you have some cabalans left. And then put aside about another 91,000 shillings to feed them. I always advise you, houses like this shouldn't be contract best because we can always calculate them so easily. All right? So just put aside 91,000 shillings for someone who is going to what? Who is going to f uh, for the food, all right? You see me breaking it down. 10 kilograms of posho, 5 kilograms of what? Of beans. And then for fire relations, 30,000 is enough. If you have to buy firewood, if you have to buy charcoal, whichever you choose, 30K should be enough to cost you on that. And then material, transportation for all your material, put aside 150,000 shillings because the material is a little bit a lot. And then you need nails. You need three inch nails, four inch nails, five inch nails, and then one and a half. All right, my batteries, I have to change batteries, yeah? But let me finish this in a minute. You see me giving you different uh, kilograms of nails that you need. These nails, they'll use them to sit your house. They need them to do the beam. Really, there isn't too much they need the nails for, so even these kilograms will remain. Just protect them. You need six kilograms of three inches because it's the most used inch. You need five kilograms of four inches, second most used. Then four kilograms of five inch and then four kilograms of one and a half. Each kilogram is going for about 5,500 at most maybe minimum 5,000, yeah? Then you need a DPC roll. Eh? The DPC roll is 80,000 shillings. Just buy a roll. Don't buy those wood kilometers. Buy a roll. Because when they are sit putting your bricks, eh, of Ozilava, your, your bricks, they put like a DPC line. Don't pour concrete in your house without a DPC. It will make your house cold and the water will easily rise into your house. DPC has a lot of importances that I've been giving you over the time. Then, these are the other things. You need a drum for water storage if you don't have one. You need to put aside 50,000 shillings for, to cater for water. And if you have water nearby, either way. Just put aside 50k. You need water storage. It's very important to always store water eh, on site. Even if you have already water nearby, eh, just store some because sometimes the water is not there. Then you need a wheelbarrow now. Aha. Uh -huh. These are the things I wanted to talk about. This is a trick I just learned recently. For things like wheelbarrows, uh, um, wheelbarrows, pangas, pickaxes, spades, hoes, you can rent them. The moment you reach a village, okay, find out who has what. Ask, wheelbarrow, rent these things, don't buy them. <laughs> Unless you're going to do continuous construction. But if you're not, you're just doing your construction there and then, rent them. We know this job is supposed to take us one week this job is supposed to last us one week i'll give you the labor costs so if we know it's going to last us one week the most you should be paying to rent a wheelbarrow on a daily basis the most is five thousand shillings 
and then you multiply that 5,000 by 7. Keep the wheelbarrow safe, just have it. Or you can, they can always take it back. That is cheap. The total is 35,000 shillings. If you're to buy a new wheelbarrow, you need at least 190,000 shillings. At least. That's a lot of money. That money, you can divert it to do other things. Watch together by renting that wheelbarrow. People have them in the village. But Jakua. Then, pangas, pickaxes, katipangas, you can pay 1,000 shillings per day to rent it. To rent is okupangisa. 1,000 shillings times 7, that's 7,000 shillings. All right? That one, you need it full time. Better now. Because they can always need to, to chop something. Then, a pickaxe, you need to rent them for two days only. When they're excavating your foundation, all right? Your, ex your foundation should be excavated in a day, right? One day is enough. But just in case, just pay for two days. So each pickaxe, you need two pickaxes to be with you on site. Each pickaxe, pay 2,000 shillings maximum for you to rent it. And then you multiply that and get your total of what? Um, 8,000. And then spades, you need two spades. All right? Actually, one spade. But even that, you should maximum you should pay is 2,000 shillings per spade. You need those ones full time for the full seven days you'll be working, and that is 14,000 shillings. All right? Now, you need a hole. That one is also full time. The most is 2,000 that you should pay for it. Now, you need the things you, those, those ones, the things I've just mentioned, you don't have to buy, but you can rent. And then you need to buy an axle blade. Axle blade, the Jawakozi Sakolachi. So that one, don't rent, don't rent, just own it. Because you still have a lot of work going on on site for that. Um, you need to buy your jerrycans three. I'll tell you why you need three. They cut them up and use them to distribute material. Because you're going to use three masons for this work to, to in order to finish it in one week. All right? And each jerrycan should cost you 10,000 shillings, right? Or you can actually buy two jerrycans and split them equally. But the person who is distributing the material or the people also need their own jerrycan. So that they don't have to carry the jerrycan that the mason is using at Etuga and bring material. Never allow the mason to be without material on site. Okay? So everyone who is distributing material should have their own jerrycan. Are we together? So the masons have their, their jerrycans that's cut that are not going anywhere. And then you also, the, the people who are distributing also have their own jerrycans that they're using. And then you have a mixer who is also not leaving their what? Who is not leaving their station? So in this case, we are going to need uh, three laborers and three masons. One laborer or, or porter mixes. Then the two distribute among the three. All right? In a week, at most, a week, they should be done with this. This is not that gruesome that they should take more than a week. I've built bigger houses in 14 days, even 12 days, way bigger. So I know what I'm talking about. That's why we, incre we increased what? Labor. Now you need size or echigua, girls, echigua, the one they use to sit the house. Wanji, baby. Wanji. Sorry. Sorry, baby. You're interfering with my video. Okay, uh huh. So you need an axle blade. I already talked about that. Axle blades are 10,000. You need a bow. Alright, I was saying you need a bow. So uh, a bow is 22,000. That is including the, the what? The blade. Because eh? the bow is 11, and then the blade is also 11. Making it 22,000. You need a hammer. I've told you what type of hammer you need. That one with a hole at the end, the local ones. Eh? You need two. Because you have three masons, and two of them might be uh, pounding, and one is cutting. Or two cutting. I don't know. All right. So it turns out I didn't come with my spare battery, which leaves me pausing. Oh, another day. Wow. Hammers. When you're buying hammers, endeavor to buy hammers that actually have a hole at the back. Okay? Yep. You need water levels. The people who are building will tell you how many meters of water level that you need. Alright? And then, on top of all this, put aside, this house is loud, it's like I'm in a tunnel. 
put aside 200,000 shillings as your emergency money. Maybe go Like I said, if you want to save on money, reduce on your dimensions of the house. The bigger the dimensions, the more material you need, the more money you spend. The money that I've given you is not, or the money, the total that I'm about to give you, is not uh, a final total for everyone. It's only final for those who want to use my dimensions. Okay? Now, these are the totals because we're trying to wind up this video. If you're building a house with soil bricks, that is from foundation to wall plate. All right? Or to the beam level. Your total is 600. Sorry, math. Your total is 6 million. 644,000 Ugandan shillings. All right? If you add the emergency money, Ngobado Zifunye, yeah. remember for me, the, the calculations of materials I've given you, you will not need this money, but just in case, Kumanga, your builders might build longer than you anticipated. You cannot attribute that to me. Or they might waste material. Number, th number two, the calculations I'm giving you are standard for measurement. That is one bag of cement to one to two wheelbarrows of lake sand to one wheelbarrow of plaster sand. Kati, you, you might say you don't have money and you put four wheelbarrows to one bag that is three wheelbarrows of lake sand and one wheelbarrow of plaster sand to one bag of cement and then there are others who are too mean on themselves but if you're going to do things like this please don't do them in the foundation make sure in the foundation you do standard calculations then otherwise what who cared Hey, you can do whatever you want. It's your house. I can't tell you what to do with it. There are people who are mixing five wheelbarrows. That they put one bag of cement to four wheelbarrows of lake sand to one wheelbarrow of plaster sand. Another thing, endeavor to use the right sand. There are people who are selling to you plaster sand as lake sand. Please learn the difference. If you watch my video on current prices of lake sand, you will see me showing you different sands and how they actually look. And you will see me showing you how Rela actually looks, the grain, everything. Then the other lake sand that's not Rela, also sh I also showed you. Because in this video, there is nothing I can actually do when I'm giving you math. I like it when you see what I'm talking about. So I end up traveling further just so to show you. I don't want to just tell you. All right. Now, the total for those who are building with soil bricks using the right measurements or the standard measurements of construction is 6,844,000 shillings. That's that. If you have 6,844,000 shillings, also, you have 6,844,000 shillings. Okuva mumusinji paka ku ring beam. Gana yomu edingo yene nkokoto mnyumba. With this money, yes. And you have no worries. Then there are those who even use lesser money. You can even use 4M. How? The more you mix your cement, the less material you need to buy. How? Kati, if you're putting if you're putting one four by sorry, five to one. Chita gets anti cement, the, the, the amount of cement reduces, which leaves you with more money. But I'm not advising you to do these things. I'm just showing you what people actually do. Hey, if you're on dry land, you can do these things. But where you are, or there is a swamp like environment, don't do these things. You will regret. I always tell you and caution you. But even at 4 a.m., you can build this double house. <laughs> Even at 3 a.m. on one Ajizimba, ah, I It's really <laughs> up to you. But if you're using standard measures, this is the right amount of money you need.
Now, for those who are building with clay bricks, your total is a bit higher. Your total is 7 million. 484,000 shillings when everything is included. All right? But if you eliminate the emergency money in Atonazi for now, you simply need 7,284,000 Ugandan shillings. The math I'm giving you is in Ugandan shillings. Anyone that wants any other currency, Simayinakumanya, ask me directly and I'll translate for you. Kuwanga we nachite kamu dollars, chija kuna fuyanyo me guangali ya fe. But you know what I mean. If you're trying to build a house this, because this house is actually big, mazinanyomba nene. So, a house like this in Kampala, to rent it, if you don't have, mbabu ulida, if you don't have between 700,000 shillings upwards, to wajikuwa... So if you build, if you have land in Kampala, eh, hey, usubolo kuteka waka yumba konga kanu. And you start getting 700,000 shillings plus a month. Omutiesa sulida masanyalaze. Obochitegeira. It gives you money. You can get your money back in at most two years. Not an kukuli ya magoba. Naba na nebali yako. But maintain your houses. Mwawazi mbe nyumba zaba pangisa. Maintain them. That's, that's the only way you can make money out of them. Now, this is, there is another alternative. If you bought land in a swamp-like area, I would not advise you to put soil bricks in your foundation. Put clay bricks. Then after your foundation, you can continue with soil bricks. In your foundation, probably for this particular house, will require at least 2,000 bricks. I told you, an elf carries 1,000 bricks. Zino, zino bricks and oh no, soil bricks, clay bricks. 1,000 per elf. Katibu elf bubidi busa bolo kuzimbilo musinji guno bulonji na ibufika na oko. So, you get your 2,000 bricks at 280, your total is uh, 560,000 shillings. Then after that you proceed and buy 6,000 soil bricks at 200 shillings or even less. By the way, the money that I always give you is not for everyone. Bliyomu alonda wagwa, pick your battle. You all fall in your own categories. That's why when I'm giving you prices, I always give you alternatives. Because I know someone will do this, someone will do that. Bliyomu akola chiche. Aulida. Umutu ayagala kuzimba na itaina walonji sent. Na inga yandi agado kubako nebombe uwe. Nga makanka teke kwa mumu sinju. Yeah, there is nothing wrong with that. So nonetheless, the total for that person who uses uh, clay bricks in the foundation and continues with soil bricks, your total is 7 million and 4,000 Ugandan shillings. Yes, that's if everything is included. 200 for emergencies. Montegede. But there are very many ways as builders, the way they cut corners. Kati goinzo kusasula, supervise your buildings. Goinzo kusasula full money. Oli na agenda na kole bibi yanku gambi. Na alia sentezo. Na kuwe chizimbe ngo chidabako. Na inga vachikola mo makona manji. By makona, I mean, um, it, they're not up to standard. Eh? Na inga chidabika bulonji. Anyway, that was me. Thanks for watching Doreen's African Experiences. Thank you for bearing with me and putting up with me and in, in getting entertained by me and following me and supporting me. You do so much for me, Sola Bimalayo. But I want you to know I appreciate you. I wish to get a bit of a lot of people to be Mali. I want you to get a lot of people to get more options. Anyone can build. Nayo you Zimbiechi or Zimbiotia. Okay? Enjoy your week and see ya in the next video.